Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli had signed an agreement with sitting ministers in a bid to raise the overall performance of the bureaucracy. The much touted agreement had read raised considerable hopes but six months down the line the performance of the considered ministers ministries remained dismal good morning i am vipashna tamang and these are the headlines of the hour prime minister's work execution agreement with departmental ministers ministries turns pointless ministries fail to accomplish even 25 percent of their commitment the first year of the Chief Justice Rana remains average despite his pledges to revamp country's judiciary. Effective justice delivery is still a far cry. US President Donald Trump warns that the US is targeting 52 Iranian sites and will strike very fast and very hard if Tehran hits Americans or US assets. And Barcelona settle for a two-all draw against Espanyol. Real Madrid win against Getafe to level points with Barcelona at the top of the league table. Let's begin with the national political updates. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli signed a work execution agreement with the departmental ministers five months ago. However, the government's overall performance has remained dismal. The ministers have even stopped submitting their monthly progress reports due to their failure to abide by the agreement. This has raised questions regarding the agreement itself. Prime Minister Oli had forced the agreement with his cabinet ministers on 31st of July, five months earlier, in a bid to do away with works delays and to fully utilize the development budget. Many assumed that the much touted agreement by the executive head of the country with his ministers would produce effective results in the bureaucracy. Likewise, when the ministers forged contracts with the secretaries of their respective ministries, it raised even more hope among the public. However, only 10% of the development budget has been used till the end of first half of the current fiscal year as the ministries have hardly accomplished one-fourth of their set target. The Ministry of Labour and Employment has spent 2% while Agriculture has spent 6% of development budget. The ministers and secretaries have failed to submit the monthly progress reports at the Office of Prime Minister and Council of Ministers. The government spokesperson opined that there has been problem within the bureaucracy and claimed that there is still some time to re rectify the weakness. Sampuna Rukma, Gotti Bodona Boni Pugia, China, and Nikurati, Shoem Pradan Mandri Julibani, Baram Bar Bani Rahnovata, Milipani Bani Regasum, Ramisita or Copical Govern China. Kinamani Amisita Wakosham and Triayu, Eslaine Borda Gotti Silbonam Nikurama, Amir Save Lazmogos. The work performance deal is the guideline to achieve the target set for the work progress. The main objective of the agreement is to accelerate the work of the concerned officials by making them accountable towards their work. However, the worth of the agreement has been questioned due to the stakeholders failing to achieve the set target and to submit the appraisal report to the concerned authority. मध्य तरीका ले कानून को पालन कर रहा आपनो क्षमता और जनता को आवश्यकता का बीच का सही कुराए रू बंदा अपनी महिले सही ये कुराए रू बने बने मोटूलो उनसे बने खाल को सोच रख रही अवस्था सीरियस ना भाई रहेगा उसे ओ सुना आपका बेला ठुल ठुला कुराए करनो अस्वाभाविक कोई ना तो र बहुत मां आई शक्के बसी प्रधानमंत्री हो ना तो मंत्री हो ना गौर में सकने में आते काम करने गौर दियो बने जनता को विश्वास जीतना सकें जो ठुला कुराए करने शाना कुराए बनी काम से ना बने बहाय बसी तो सही गारो बस there is no hindrance in implementing the government's policies and programs, including the annual budget, as the concerned ministries and secretaries should bear the responsibility for failing to achieve the government's objective. The prime minister, too, should have carried out effective monitoring to validate the objectives of the work execution agreement. Chief Justice Cholindra Samser Rana has claimed that he has attained many remarkable achievements during the first one year of his tenure. However, analysts feel that except for garnering some accolades during the initial days of his term in the office, he has constantly been mired in controversies in recent times. 
Soon after assuming the office, Chief Justice Rana had pledged to eradicate corruption and ensure efficient justice delivery. He also mobilized a mechanism through the Judicial Council to carry out thorough monitoring on court verdicts in a bid to maintain judicial discipline. The move led to prosecution of more than a dozen justices for their alleged misconduct. Despite all his initial initiatives, the Chief Justice, however, has been dragged into controversies regarding appointment of Supreme Court justices as he appointed tainted personalities convicted of corruption. Although the number of justices has hardly changed since he assumed the office, the number of pending cases at the Supreme Court has constantly increased. Chief Justice Rana himself admitted that sorting out of cases and implementation of court's verdict has failed to expedite. Another highly controversial verdict during the first year of his tenure was regarding the captain gains, capital gains tax owed by private telecom giant and cell. The verdict was widely criticized not only at the parliament and the parliamentary committee but by Nepal Bar Association as well. Chief Justice has also been alleged of remaining indifferent towards large-scale corruption cases involving huge amounts of irregularities in the state coffers. The main opposition Nepali Congress and Rashtriya Janata Party Nepal have finalized the candidates for the upcoming election of the National Assembly. Nepali Congress has finalized 14 candidates, whereas RJP Nepal has put forth the name of two candidates. As per the final list, Nepali Congress has confirmed Nir Bahadur Bika, Mina Pulami and Rajendra Ghimire in Province 1. Likewise, from Province 2, the party has decided to field Nagina Yadav and Bhola Panjiyar for the National Assembly election. From Province 3, Chali Kumari Sharma Upadhyaye and Hari Sharan Shrasta and from Gandaki Province, Surya Prashad Rigmi and Bimala Gautan will be the candidates for the election. Bal Krishna Pandey, Girija Pandey and Miraj Halwai will be the candidates from Province 5 and Dasalli Ram Pathak and Sabitri Podil have been fielded for, from Karnali Province. Likewise, Pratap Thagunna and Tulasi Devkota are vying from Sudur Pashim Province. Likewise, the meeting of the RGP Nepal held at party's office Babar Mahal had, has finalized the names of Mrigendra Singh Yadav and Shekhar Singh for the National Assembly election. The party decided to name the candidates after forming the el electoral alliance with the ruling Nepal Communist Party. Earlier, the ruling NCP had already finalized the names of its candidates. All the candidates will file their candidacy today for the election of the upper house slated for 23rd of January. However, Samajwadi Party, with, which has formed the electoral alliance with Nepali Congress, has not yet finalized the candidates. And we'll take a short break here. We have more news coming up. Welcome back. The government has been vowing to increase the export of agricultural products with comparatively more financial values in the past 10 years in a bit to alleviate the increasing trade deficit. The concerned authorities, however, have so far failed to facilitate the supply of such products to the dis disappointment of entrepreneurs. There is an extensive demand of Nepali's churpi, a traditional hardened cheese specially produced in mountainous regions in Japan and the US along with several European countries. The export of these traditional cheese, however, has been, have been confined to the US recently as the government authorities in the US and Japan demanded quality certificate to assure harmless edibility of the product. This has also disappointed the Nepalese traders who were elated due to the increasing attraction of the domestic milk products in the foreign countries. Although the demand of Nepalese agricultural products is high in the international market, the government has failed to come up with the proofs like quality certificates, causing negative impact on both their production and export. Other domestic products that have suffered their drastic decline in export due to the lack of government certification are livestock products such as pork and mutton, among others, although such products are high in demand in China. China has freed the customs duty on as many as 8,000 Nepalese products. However, hardly around 500 of such products are being exported to the northern neighbor, merely due to the lack of government certificates. And it's time now for the international update.
U.S. President Donald Trump has warned that the U.S. is targeting 52 Iranian sites and will strike very fast and very hard if Tehran hits Americans or U.S. assets. His comments followed the U.S. assassination of Qasem Soleimani, a top Iranian general, in a drone strike. Iran has vowed to avenge the killing of their army commander. Trump wrote on Twitter that Iran is talking very boldly about targeting certain USA assets in response to their general's death. Night, he said the U.S. has identified 52 Iranian sites, some at a very high level and important to Iran and the Iranian culture, and those targets and Iran itself will be hit very fast and very hard if Tehran strikes the U.S. The president said the 52 targets represented the 52 American Americans held hostage in Iran for more than a year from late 1979 after they were seized at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. Trump's tweet came hours after a huge funeral procession for Soleimani was held in Baghdad where he was killed. Several rocket attacks shook the area shortly after the procession, including one in the Green Zone near the U.S. Embassy. Several were fired north of the Iraqi capital at Balad Air Base, which houses U.S. forces. The Iraqi military said nobody had been hurt in the attacks. No group has yet said it was behind the development. And it's time now for another short break. We'll be right back. And in our Public Voice segment, we had asked the farmers' representatives who had gathered in Dhankuta district what kind of difficulties had they been facing in production and export of cardamom. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public Voice. <laughs> को बारे में ऐसे हमले अली समस्या पर एक उसका बीच उल्लिया ले जाए अब बीच में हमरों जाए अब जोन पशीना था तो पशीना जाए अब ना खाओ उसको कुन बिरुवा जाए कुन कुन ठामा लगाने कुन जात को आने से अनि प्लस रोग रोग आ ले इले देरे सताई रह गया था अरा रोग आ ले जो कसरे नियंत्रण करने तेरे को जाए ताली मारू सरकार ले तो बनी येर दिन उपार नहीं किर्शा करो ले उचित मूल्य पाऊं बिचौलिया बड़ा चाहिए हमी छुटकारा पाऊं तब बेपारी सीधे हमी संग आवश एंड इट्स टाइम नाउ फॉर आवर सेगमेंट पब्लिक पॉल्स वे टेक्स्ट अस विथ योर ओपिनियन Public Pulse. And here's the question, what should be done to curb the anarchic activities of student unions at government colleges? Your options are option A, emphasize educational issues, option B, prohibit political sister organizations, and option C, scrap free student unions. The voting for the question is on, type NEWS, select your options A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the sports update. Sports News. Defending champions Barcelona settled for a two-all draw against Spaniel in the Spanish La Liga. Spaniel languishing at the end of the relegation zone stunned the visitors with a 23rd-minute goal by David Lopez. Luis Suarez scored the equaliser five minutes into the second half, while Aruto Arturo Vidal made a 2-1 for Barcelona in the 59th minute. However, Barcelona came into pressure after Frankie de Jong was sent off following second booking in the 75th minute. Spaniel made most of the number advantage as the Chinese player Uli got the equaliser in the 88th minute. In the other match, Real Madrid chalked out a 3-1 win over Getafe to level points with Barcelona at the top of the La Liga. And it's time now for our Saturday special segment, Around the World. Iran's most powerful military commander, General Qasim Soleimani, has been killed by a U.S. airstrike in Iraq. The 62-year-old spearheaded Iranian military operations in the Middle East as head of Iran's elite Quds forces. He was killed at Baghdad airport alongside local Iran-backed militias in a strike ordered by U.S. President Donald Trump. 
A Sudanese court has sentenced 29 intelligence officers to death for the torture and killing of a teacher. 36-year-old Ahmed al Khair died in custody in February following his arrest for taking part in protests against the then-president Omar al-Bashir's government. These are the first sentences handed down over the crackdown on pro-democracy activists in the months before Bashir was toppled in April. The United Nations General Assembly approved a resolution strongly condemning rights abuses against Rohingya Muslims and other minority groups in Myanmar, including arbitrary arrests, torture, rape and deaths in detention. In a 134-9 vote with 28 abstentions on Friday, the body approved the resolution, which also calls on Myanmar's government to take urgent measures to combat incitement of hatred against the Rohingya and other minorities in the states of Rakhine, Kachin and Shan. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said he is ending his suspension of nuclear and long-range missile tests he put in place during talks with the U.S. Kim also said his country would soon introduce a new strategic weapon. But he left a door open for dialogue, saying the scope of testing would depend on the United States' attitude. Talks between the U.S. and North Korea have stalled with Washington, refusing to lift sanctions until Pyongyang fully abandons its nuclear program. At least 43 people died in flooding in the Indonesian capital, Jakarta, after the city had its most intense rainfall for at least 24 years. Floods are one of the reasons Indonesian President Joko Widodo has announced plans to move the capital to East Borneo in the next few years. Jakarta is one of the fastest sinking cities in the world, and experts say it could be entirely submerged by year 2050. Lastly, fireworks, resolutions, new energies and new commitments. People across the world welcomed New Year 2020 with a lot of fanfare by organizing various programs across the world this week. And before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories one more time. Prime Minister's work execution agreement with departmental ministers turned pointless. Ministries failed to accomplish even 25% of their commitment. The first year of the Chief Justice Rana remains average despite his pledges to revamp country's judiciary. Effective justice delivery is still a far cry. U.S. President Donald Trump warns that the U.S. is targeting 52 Iranian sites and will strike very fast and very hard if Tehran hits Americans or U.S. assets. And Barcelona settled for a two-all draw against Spaniel. Real Madrid win against Getafe to level points with Barcelona at the top of the league table. And that's all for the moment. Our next English Bulletin will air at 11 a.m. Stay with us for more news and entertainment on KTVHD. Good day.